Hi, and welcome to this class. And I hope you have paid attention to the previous classes that we spoke about. And in summary, we are really intentional about making you the best that can be there in the market. In this particular class, I want us to look into how we can build proper relationships with the people we are communicating to, and also make it a proper and a good, fast impression, which really matters a lot. And I want us to dive in into the first class on building a proper relationship. Now, how do relationships affect communication, you could be asking. It is very important for us to understand that it is important to know that communication always happens between two persons. That's a very important thing to always know, that you're communicating to someone who, on the other end, may want to feel appreciated in whatever that they're doing, and every time you're communicating to them, they want to feel that, yes, this person cares, probably cares about me. So all communication in business is done between people. That's a fact that you must always understand. So be aware that how relationships between these people uh, are affects how we communicate. How relationships are between these particular people affects how we communicate. So the message that we communicate itself is not just the only thing that we have to think about. It's not just about that particular message that you're writing, if it's a letter, if it's a message that you're writing, because nowadays communication can as well happen on email, digitally, a lot of it, by the way. So it's not just that that matters. It's also about how we are communicating and to whom we are communicating. So you cannot send a message without first considering the relationship between the yourself and the receiver. And so you could be asking, how do I then guess or think about, oh, the person who's receiving this message? Sometimes it's hard because maybe it's the HR profession that has just asked you to probably apply. And sometimes it could be a manager in a place. So then the question would be, how do you then ensure that you have built this relationship? And very quickly, I'll be taking you through that. And so when communicating between people before sending any communication, consider your relationship with that particular receiver. There are certain three things that I always say that are important for you to establish a proper relationship and things to think about as well. Now, number one, build that relationship. And this is simply built by the salutations that you will give to that person. Did you salute them? Do they know that you exist? And can they particularly feel, well, this person is respectful? And how you do that sometimes is purely by saying hello. Sometimes it's just the salutation at dear sir, if you don't know the person. Dear madam, if you don't know the person. Sometimes if you know the person, you can address them directly. So the salutations are very important, be it on a letter, be it on an email. And this really happens especially when we're doing, especially on the written communications part of it. If it's a call, which we shall be talking about how to make professional calls, you also establish that by how you communicate. Even if you're familiar to the person, let them feel that this is a formal conversation that you're having. And especially when it's about jobs and pitching for ideas that you have, always consider that you have to build that proper professional relationship by your salutations. Second thing, think ahead. Think ahead about how your message will be received by the person you're communicating with. How will your message be received? That's a very important question to ask yourself. And sometimes to do that is to look at the message you're about to send and read it and ask yourself, how will this be received? If you can't ask yourself that question, then know that you're not able to identify or to verify how your relationship will be built with the other person. Remember we said something in our previous classes that the phrase, it starts before it starts, is a standalone by itself. That your communication, how you are received, will start even before you start. So it is important that elements that communicate about you ahead of time, a letter, an email, a message, already creates an impression about you. All right? And then the third thing is, what are the results? Always thinking about what you expect back once they read this. So it is by revising whatever you're about to send that matters a lot. Very important. Of course, now this builds into the next part of this conversation about making a good first impression. You don't have second chances, especially when it comes to building your first impression. You want to get it right the first time. We shall be talking about that. 
Now listen, probably you could say, oh, if I've messed it up, sometimes I can rebuild it. Rebuilding it takes time. But even researchers have it that your first seven seconds, especially on a physical one-on-one -on -one meetup, matters big time. And you want to ensure that you don't mess it up within those first seven seconds of a physical meeting. But what about in writing as well? Does it matter? Absolutely, it matters a lot. Remember the previous class that I've just spoken about? That how you write, the things that you write, matters big time. And people can say, we would love to meet this person based on how they write. So it is very important that we look into that. Now, how do you then make a good first impression? Now, please note this, that you never get a second chance at this when it comes to making a first impression. And I'll be giving you some key pointers to look at that. Number one, a positive first impression is very paramount and you must as well expect that once you have created this, you will expect as well a positive response from the other party. You give a first impression that is good, you expect as well to get back. And chances are this never fails. That once you give a proper one at the first, you will always receive the same thing as well. I'm sure you're already asking then how do I do this? But before then, let's get back to our three pointers. Number two, carelessness or disorganization creates something else about yourself. You make it harder for yourself to convince the other party that you are good for this job, proper for this particular task you're asking for. So you must at all times ensure that you're not appearing careless or disorganized. And thirdly, it is well worth taking the trouble to get it first, to get it right first time. Always ensure you rehearse, prepare, to ensure that you're getting it right at the first time. And I don't know how best to emphasize on the importance of the fact that you have to look before you send. Look again before you send. And if it's a physical meeting as well, you have to ensure that you are prepared for this before you go there instead. And I have a few tips to share with you on how sometimes we can do this. Um, let's look at this. Uh, make your business dealing successful. Yes, that's, a, that's just an underlying factor. Some of the tips that I look up to that are quite important and I think could probably help us in making this particular impressions that we're talking about. Number one, be on time. Oh my goodness, how can I emphasize on this? If someone is late and in the live classes we elaborate this more, if it's a date for example and someone doesn't keep time, they're communicating something. If they come in two hours late, one hour late, they're saying something to you. And so that's the same thing about when you're going to a pitch, when you're going to uh, get a job, be on time. There is no negotiation about that. In fact, this is what I normally suggest. Don't be on time. Go before time. 10 minutes before, 15 minutes, minutes before. It doesn't harm. It actually shows interest that you're really ready for this and interested in this. Second thing, present yourself appropriately, that is dress code. I always say you never go wrong by being formal, not unless they have said don't be too formal. It's fine. You never go wrong. You'd rather be formal in a very informal place and people say, okay, it's, it's a bit better. But sometimes you can study how they dress and all those kind of things, but you never go wrong by being formal. Number three, be yourself. Sometimes I've seen people who have tried to impress by trying to be different or someone else speaking differently. No, be yourself. Let people feel you are authentic in your first conversations with them. Number four, have a winning smile. There is never something wrong with a smile. You always want to be the person who they feel this one is approachable. This one brings some energy in this place. And sometimes it's called reciprocation. And you shall be looking at that in further classes, where if someone greets you with such a big smile, you can't be the one who is frowning. No, give them back that smile as well. Of course, the other thing as well uh, is the handshake that you will come along with it because most of them will stretch their hands to shake your hand. Please make sure it's firm and it's a proper handshake. Don't, not too long, but let the people feel that you're confident. Not too sweaty hands as well. <laughs> make sure at least you're not sending a signal of being nervous by being sweaty. So just make sure your handshake is firm and ready to go. And I think I demonstrated that in the live class before. And... Uh, we can talk about being confident, of course, and that is exuded by your eye contact. 
Look at the person straight in the eye as they're communicating with you. It speaks that you're confident about what you're talking about. Small talk sometimes, yes, you can have it. Maybe they can say, hi, how are you? How is it coming here? If they are engaging in small talk, be ready to respond, don't be nervous. Sometimes respond to what they are asking about. How's the morning like? You know, those kind of things. Be ready to uh, respond back. And you know, sometimes it's good to rehearse some of the questions in the small talk that we'll ask before they get to the interview or to the pitching uh, class. Sometimes they will ask you things like, how is your morning? How do you respond to that? Be prepared for such answers. You know, it's fine, thank you. You know, with a good smile, confidence, remember eye contact as you go. I, in the live classes, we shall explore more of some of those opening sessions that come along. So be positive. Oh yes, you must be enthusiastic. Let people feel like you are ready for this, that you want this. And that is exuded by the confidence, the smile, how you approach the people as they're coming along with you and how you respond to their questions. Let them feel you're not dull. Let them feel that you're really energetic and looking forward to working with them, all right? And then finally as well, be courteous and attentive. You don't want someone asking you a question and responding to something else. And even when you didn't hear it well, you can as well say, beg your pardon, mate, can you repeat what you just asked me? It's okay, it's okay. Uh, but don't, don't just look as if you're not attentive at all. And just being courteous, you know, excuse me, uh, you know, if you can sometimes, you know, pull in a seat or open in a door, it's okay. Be courteous, let them feel that you're courteous and attentive in those particular areas. And so there you have it in some of the ways we can create first impressions. But I wanted to show you one more slide as well, and I don't want you to forget this completely. It's a G-I-R-F-T, get it right first time. Rarely do you have second chances to showcase that you knew what you're supposed to do. So get it right the first time. Always be prepared, all right? And how you get this right the first time, prepare. Always think ahead. Think ahead of what is expected, all right? And I hope that is very clear. I want to leave you with a video that I want you to watch and see how this can be done. It takes time to really get to know someone, but first impressions often determine whether someone is willing to spend more time learning about you. In fact, people's first impressions are made within seven seconds of meeting someone new. The details that someone takes in about you all factor into how they perceive you to be. Whether you ace that job interview or score a second date all depends on how you project yourself. Here are some tips on how to make a good impression. 1. Be enthusiastic. Show interest in the person you meet. Don't hold back or be afraid to show that you're excited about something. In fact, people often see passion as a charming sign of strength and inspiration. Showing your enthusiasm by smiling or incorporating friendly humor will make you seem approachable and easygoing. 2. Show respect. People want to feel respected before they reciprocate it. Be polite and show manners with please and thank you. And don't just focus your manners towards the person you meet. Make sure to treat everyone around you well, too, as it shows a lot about who you are. For example, if you're out for dinner, be sure to treat your waiters well, not only your date. 3. Be open to new ideas. Openness is an inviting trait, so give new experiences a shot. You don't have to lie and be enthusiastic about it if you didn't enjoy it, but let people know that you're willing to try something new with them. This will also encourage them to be open to your suggestions as well. Engaging in new activity together is a great conversation starter and can create a sense of closeness. 4. Be positive. Although life can be challenging, if you're able to make every moment count and find the good even within the bad, people will be drawn to your resilience. You shouldn't be a blind optimist, but having a positive outlook, despite any hardships, makes you seem dependable. 5. Realize it's not all about you. It's great to show off your strengths when meeting someone new, but people also like to see a degree of humility, because it shows that you understand there's always room for improvement. There's a difference between confidence and self-centeredness. To avoid seeming conceited, focus on larger concerns in the world, and be sure you're letting the other person participate equally in the conversation. 6. Try to avoid the bad days. Timing plays an important role, and while there's only so much we can control, if something unfortunate happens that deeply affects you, you're not obliged to follow through with a scheduled meeting on the same day. Instead, you can bring up the issue and set up another time. Let them know your time with them is valuable to you, so you don't want to let unfavorable aspects of your life to affect them or make them uncomfortable. It'll show wise judgment on your part and demonstrate your ability to communicate effectively. 7. Pay attention to your body language. 
Body language has four times the influence on first impressions than the words that come out of your mouth. It's important to be aware of the way you present yourself. Make sure your posture is good, make strong eye contact, and lean forward to express interest. It's not the end of the world if you don't make a good first impression, even if you meet with someone important, but don't feel like you have to be someone else. There will always be more opportunities to connect with other people. What do you do that helps you make a good impression? Have you noticed anything other people do that leaves a good or bad impression on you? Feel free to share in the comments below.